and here we are way out of uh, the, the normal version of Paris, the normal views of Paris. Don't adjust that dial. This is, in fact, still within the limits of the city of Paris. And welcome as I wait for a few of my live viewers. Uh, I guess you can hear me on the replay right now, and thank you for that. And I am going to show you today uh, a very special, uh, what is um, quite an interesting discovery for most people, and a version of Paris that you might not otherwise find. We're way out uh, towards the edge in the northeast of the city in the 19th arrondissement. And thanks, I can see all those familiar names coming up, my live viewers. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And here we go, let's get started. So we're in an area, a little village uh, residence known as La Mousaille. La Mousaille is a strange name for a uh, French neighborhood. In fact, it's not a French word at all. So why don't I show you? Uh, it starts with this, and then we're going to explore a series of leafy alleyways like this one. We got a beautiful classic street lamp there, and there will be plenty of that on this walk today. So let's get started here. The village atmosphere of a neighborhood called La Mosaia. Hello, everybody. There's already a hundred of you. Fantastic. We're in the 19th arrondissement today. A very leafy and very flowery portion of the city, one that many people never see. And these are all homes here. There are a series in the 19th arrondissement, a series of about 20 or so little cobblestone alleys tucked away. And so we've got houses lining each side and these beautiful street lamps and little gardens and courtyards. And so I wanted to give you a nice dose of that today. <laughs> Jennifer Warren says, Leafalicious. Yeah, get ready, Jennifer. You're going to get plenty of uh, Leafalicious views today. I'm curious how many of you have even heard of this neighborhood, La Mousaille. And let me explain the, the name of it. Uh, Mousaille is actually a place that exists in North Africa and Algeria. And the French uh, had a military campaign, campaign rather, in the 1830s. And uh, it was a victory for the French. So they named this quarter, this neighborhood, after the um, Algerian city where the French conquest happened, the French military victory. And the place is called La Mousaille. If I turn back around here, it's always worth it to turn back around whenever you make your way up one of these alleys. Welcome everybody to the 19th arrondissement La Mousaille, a very leafy village atmosphere that is one of those spots where, you know, if you think you've seen it all in Paris, boy, you come up here and you realize there's a whole lot still going on. This is a street called the Rue de Mousaille, so the street is the um, same name as the neighborhood. And what you can do is you can crisscross your way because there are three, uh, three or four streets where you just have a whole network of these little walkways. So let's make our way up this one. This is oh, really special. I'm so glad that I can share this with you. And what, what these are called there are villas. So it's not called a rue or a, an alley. It's, they're, they're all known as villa this and villa that. It's very peaceful. Clara Borges just, just mentioned that. Absolutely, Clara. It's birds chirping. Cats running around, usually. And these little leafy canopies that come over. And the homes here I'll explain the history of this neighborhood in a minute, but you have some that are very brightly colored. If you're familiar with that street near the Gare de Lyon called the Rue Crémieux, can, there can be a little bit of that vibe here, although much fewer tourists. People almost never make it out here to the 19th at Mall. So let's describe what's going on here in La Mousaille. 
beneath our feet right now, beneath these beautiful stones, uh, was, it used to be one of the largest gypsum quarries in all of France. So they had this huge, on the hill, usually in Montmartre and, and in Belleville, they would excavate huge amounts of gypsum stone, you know, this white chalky stone that would be used to make plaster. And so there used to be quarries, a whole network of tunnels dug under this before any construction had ever happened. This, this um, neighborhood actually is nicknamed the Le Quartier d'Amérique, or the neighborhood of America. And the going theory is that some of the gypsum that was excavated from underneath this hill here would have been made into plaster and sent over to the US, to North America. And some accounts even say that the gypsum from this hill at La Musaya was used to make plaster for the White House in Washington, DC. And that is one going theory of why this neighborhood is known as the neighborhood of, of America. Le Quartier d'Amérique. And then when you get to the end of one, you can just wrap around and you can just zigzag and loop your way all the way through. Again, there are like 20 of these little villas or these alleyways. Hi everybody, I can see all your bonjours and your salus and whatnot coming through. This one's called the Villa de Bellevue. This is one of the very early villas that would have been constructed. And so to continue our historical story, Aren't these so inviting? My goodness. So, gypsum quarries in the 1870s, they stopped that activity, and then they wanted on this hill to put a huge um, uh, horse stables and a huge, huge horse market. Because in 1870, no automobiles yet, and so there were horses everywhere for transportation. So they wanted to install a huge horse market on this hill, but then those plans fell through, and so developers got the okay to build a series of residential alleyways. And it was originally these homes were for workers and artisans and factory employees. Nowadays, you can forget about it. I mean, as you can imagine, it's very high, you know, high-priced real estate. Ah, I just got a bonjour from Dubai. Fantastic. Love it, love it, love it. So this is one of those areas that they could never build very high because of those former stone quarries. There's like a Swiss cheese of tunnels beneath our feet here. And so you'll never see any homes that are taller than a couple of, of stories. And that really is the main reason why this area has been protected and has maintained its, its village atmosphere. Look at these canopies though, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Absolute treat. They say there are about 250 homes uh, built in this style, arranged in this style. Hey, I see June Parham th thanking me for the off the beaten track walk. You're very welcome, June. Back to the Rue de Musaille, and we're just going to crisscross our way around a little bit. And when you get to these major streets, they're still relatively calm. A lot of families around here, you know, people with a bit of cash. We're not too far from the um, Butte Chaumont Park, if that gives you a, an idea. Let me show you this, I love this. Heather Jackson says the area reminds her of Charleston. Well, geez, I gotta get to Charleston. Sometimes I catch myself looking at views like this and I'm like, wait a minute, am I really in Paris? I have to remind myself of where I am essentially because this is very, very un-Parisian in some ways, but in the best of ways. Uh, let's make our way up this one here. 
Look at these beautiful canopies, wow. And it just goes on and on. Randy Juleson mentions the, uh, the lamppost. Yeah, let's talk about the lamppost because I wanted to, to mention them, Randy, today. Uh, there are a staggering number of styles of lampposts, um, up to 150 different versions. And these ones are known as a style that we call, call the Oudry style, O-U-D-R-Y. And Oudry was one of the original manufacturers of this style. So let me zoom in. You have a bit of a flower motif around this section. And then this very distinct floral pattern that spirals its way. Maybe you've noticed those before. Sometimes they can be painted in gold as well. This was born out of the Hausmannian era, era of the construction of Paris, the, the rebuild. This is Napoleon III. And he, those two gentlemen, were really into injecting a bit of nature into the new streets that they were constructing. So that's what this motif is all about, the Oudry style. And of course, it would have been gas, gas lit originally. The very fancy uh, neighborhoods where there, were, there was a lot of money back in the day, you would have had a circular lamp up top with a little castle motif, a metallic castle crenellated um, motif on top. But then here in these rather sort of blue collar less wealthy neighborhoods, you'd get the boxy style of, of lamp on top. Let me also show you one, one last thing while we're zooming in on the lamp posts. Uh, each one will tell you which arrondissement it's in. So if you're ever wondering, hey, which arrondissement am I in? Just get, get yourself close to one of the uh, lamp posts, and that says 19. Of course, each one has its own serial number, too. Uh, June's admiring the brickwork as well. Yeah, there's a lot to admire here. Hi, Deborah from Texas. I can see you there. Now, here at the top of the hill, you know, if you visit this area of La Musaya, you definitely will be walking up some hills. So be prepared for that. This is not a place for people with limited mobility because you're schlepping up quite a few of these alleyways. If you notice, every now and then you get the unfortunate backdrop of one of those. Um, it's what they call an HLM or an HLM building, which last I checked, I believe it means an habitation uh, de loyer modéré, so a limited, moderated rent apartments. So it's actually the bane of, ex of uh, the existence of the folks here who live in this area, because they have to kind of pretend that those modern buildings aren't here. So you get two different types of neighborhoods smashed together, in fact. And, uh, well, this is a nice view back this way. When I research these videos for you all, I get the, sometimes the lovely side effect of meeting some of the locals happens. And I randomly, the other day, ran, in, ran into, rather, the gentleman who lives in, um, in this one here. And he's a very nice older gentleman. And we're talking about how the neighborhood has changed and whatnot. He said that the guy, the architect behind the modern buildings that everybody hates along the edge of this village, uh, Nobody liked him, of course. They thought he was a shyster. And it turns out that architect, after he finished his product, project, uh, got arrested, went to jail for some shady dealings. And so all the neighbor, all the, the residents here felt vindicated that the architect, <laughs> even though he built some ugly buildings to destroy their view, uh, ended up in prison at the, in the end. Let's continue. Uh, Florette's arriving in Paris in 10 days. Well, great. I hope this series of videos helps you uh, prep for that, Florette. What a great name, Florette. That sounds very French. That's another one. One of my...
Sorry about that. Every now and then my mic cord gets snagged by something. There we go. People got it good here. Practice my uh, walking backwards skills here. Backwards and downhill at the same time. I like to keep myself uh, challenged during these videos. Look at this. This is just, it goes on and on there as if there are around 20 of these alleyways all next to each other and you can spend an entire afternoon or, or morning. Always peaceful. So most of these were started in the 1880s. Um, and believe it or not, for, as I said earlier, the, the working class, the, the artisans, the, the factory employees of these outer arrondissements. And uh, so it's, it's funny how that works, you know. Even the, the blue-collar folks would be treated pretty well, and they had access to some pretty nice housing, which is simply not the case nowadays. Ah, here we've got a visitor, speaking of. Hello, kitty. Oh, that's a good kitty. That's a good kitty. Nice. That little cat interlude was for Dini hoteling. Uh, she loves a good kitty cat. Thinking of you, Dini, when I stroke those little kitties in Paris. Look at this beauty. And this street here, the, the Rue de Mousaille, same name as the neighborhood itself, has a, um, is sort of the backbone. And all of the alleys, or many of them, many of these villas shoot off to the left and the right. So let me show you this one here. It's called, the, as you can see, the Villa d'Alsace. And I like to approach this one from here. I want to show you this perspective. Love the buildings here. Just picture perfect. Wow. This one's a dead end, but I'll take you up there anyway. Imagine this this family's view out of their living room right there.
Oh yeah, Gretchen Rivers just mentioned it's a bit like Beacon Hill in Boston. I've been there, Gretchen, and uh, I don't think you're wrong about that. That smells so good right here. I assume it's this. Those of you who know your flowers, you can let me know what, that's, what that is, but it smells fantastic. I mean, we're at the dead end. Some roses there. And even the dead end's covered with ivy. <laughs> Why not? Oh, Jasmine. Thanks, folks. I love when I learn things on my own tours. Jasmine. Well, it smells fantastic. I gotta get me some of that for my garden. Wow, these views, these visuals are nuts. Photographer's dream, by the way. If you are a photographer and you're looking to challenge yourself by finding alternative uh, views of the city, this is, this is where it's at. And it's not just this area. I gotta tell you, the 19th and the 20th are only small. Um, if you know where to look, you can find beautiful little spots like this. But La Muzaya, where we are, is really one of the highest concentrations of these types of spaces, which I, is why I wanted to show it to you. And you wanna mark this one on your map. Speaking of maps, if you want to support me on Patreon, there's a link in the description of this replay. And um, you can do that and you can get maps of my walks that I do, of my videos. So if you like what you see, uh, you can find it yourself and you can actually, uh, you don't have to write it all down in a notebook. You can print out the map and carry it with you when you're in Paris. That's if you become a Patreon supporter and I recommend you do that if you want extra content like the maps and the tour extension that I'm going to do for folks today. Uh, for my freets, my Patreon supporters, we're going to do an extended version of this walk, and I'm going to show them even more of these alleyways, because soon I'll be wrapping up this public version. So that's nice. That's a modern building, as you can see, but the greenery still is the, the theme of the hood, so to speak. And if you're new to this program, I've, this is the 54th episode that we've done. And each time it's a different neighborhood and different details and different bits of history. And uh, I hope you can join me each week live in real time as if you were walking through the streets yourself. And if not, the replay always comes up in HD on my Facebook and my YouTube channel. So there we go. We're going to wrap up the public version of this walk. I'm going to continue it for privately for my freaks, my Patreon supporters, including I'm going to take them inside of this beauty, this church of St. Francis of Assisi a beautiful neo-Roman um, uh, hunk, of, hunk of brick. And uh, then we'll look at some other cool stuff. There's a great park that I want to show them. Uh, there's a uh, beautiful doors and some more leafy spaces and some views from the top of the hill. So thanks, everybody. I want to uh, thank you for joining me. You can go back and watch this replay if you want on Facebook or YouTube eventually. Put a high, uh, an HD version up there. And uh, if you want to take a tour with me in Paris, feel free. Uh, you can when you're, when you're in town. You can find all those links in the description here. Hope you enjoyed this little leafy country village uh, dose of the city far out in the 19th of only small, way off the beaten tourist track. And uh, I look forward to helping you discover something else next time around. Have a great day. Take care. Hope to see you in person one day and give you a tour uh, of the city myself. And um, that's about it. For my Patreon supporters, go over to our private Facebook group and I'll wait a few minutes over there and we're going to explore this church and some other things. So, All right, folks. Take care. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you on the next video. Remember, if you can't bring yourself to Paris, I'm going to bring Paris to you. Take it easy. Au revoir.